Welcome to the Front Row Podcast with Coach Mark Godfrey. I'm having a ball with these podcasts. I've, uh, we've had some great conversations with all kind of high-achieving, interesting people. And today, I'm really, really excited. Uh, for those of you that have ever tuned in and watched uh, on Netflix, uh, the show Selling the OC, I have uh, Gio Helu with me today, who I think, in my opinion, is probably one of the cornerstone guys and of the guys and gals on the show you do a great job with that and uh, so welcome man welcome to the show and we're gonna have a little fun today it's a pleasure to be here and um, look forward to diving in you know it was interesting when I was kind of thinking about all this geo uh, you know obviously we'll talk a little bit about the show and uh, but you know one thing I like to do is have people on the show that I think are like what I would call high achievers you know people that are like highly motivated, they've achieved a certain level of success, how they get there, kind of what's their story. But first of all, man, congratulations, because outside of the show, like you've just uh, you've done an amazing job selling real estate, uh, primarily right here in Orange County, I would say, Southern California, mm -hmm. and um, just a great, great job. Well, I'm uh, grateful to be here, and yeah, it's it's been a, a, a you know, amazing process for me. You know, I've when I started out, wow, almost five years ago now in real estate, I um, I had previously worked with my dad, who's a he's a builder actually. So I came into sales uh, knowing a little bit about you know the construction business and that side of the whole industry, which was really beneficial and I think gave me a little bit of a leg up when I did get into the more client uh, interacting part of it. So it's it's been a wild ride, and uh, you know I I've. I started working out with my mom, who, who you know, is a veteran in the sales and, and real estate industry, and she taught me a lot of what I know, not everything, but uh, <laughs> we're both, we're very different styles, but I think I, I was able to to kind of lean on her at the beginning and, and take, take her experience and kind of leverage that and to a sort of, you know, fake it till you make it. I, you know, <laughs> I think that just applies to almost any aspect of life, you know, fake it till you make it. You know, I walked in the room, I didn't know diddly squat, <laughs> but no one, no one was a wiser. Isn't so, that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Mean, it's uh, part of the fun. So before we kind of just dive in, because <clears throat> I've, uh, and for all of us, you know, that are, that are listening today and watching, I think it's uh, important to know, surpass the $100 million in sales, which is, uh, if you think about it too, and I know, you know, you look around the country and people that would be familiar with the show, selling the OC, be familiar with you. When you say that it's a hundred, you had a hundred million dollars in sales. That's quite an accomplishment, man. That's congratulations. Like that's, that's special. That that's not happening every day. I wouldn't think. And, uh, so remarkable job. Oh, thank you. It's, <laughs> far from where I want to be. I, you know, it's a, a stepping stone, but I'm, I'm grateful to have gotten there. And, uh, it, it's a, it's a nice looking number, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, hopefully not even close to where I want, you know, where I'm going and where I want to be soon. And, uh, I think it's also important to start off and uh, say congratulations to a proud new papa, new <laughs> daddy. He's a, just had their first uh, child, your wife, Tiffany. And, when I met the both of you, uh, she's just a doll. What a sweetheart. And so I'm really happy, you know, for you guys. You got, you brought a child into the world, and uh, that's a whole new world for you now. And that is my number one accomplishment <laughs> right there. I mean, screw the 100 million. That, seeing that baby you know, come into this world was the most, as cliche as it sounds, life-changing yeah, thing that I've is. ever experienced. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm so blessed to, to have little Teddy, and, and my wife is such a, Effing rock star. She, she, you know, did a great job making that baby and <laughs> uh, delivering him. And so it's been a true blessing and a truly exhausting but worthwhile experience so far. You know, the other day I was watching, uh, you, you did a live post, I think it was Instagram, but you did a live post and you had people just asking questions. And, uh, and uh, my fiance, Gina, who you've met, we, we were watching it. And, uh, you know, you're kind of people are asking all kind of questions, but one thing that was really impressive to me and then also to, to Gina as well is like even on that, you know, it was genuine how much um, you just kind of praised your wife too. you know, like you were, somebody asked you about sleeping through the night or something. You got to talking about something like that. And, you know, obviously you're you, you wake up as well. But the fact for a female, it's a little different. You know, they, they got 
they step up to the plate probably a little more than we do sometimes, but you were so quick to give her credit, and that was so cool, man. It was oh, really awesome. Well, she deserves it all. I, I, you know, as tired as I am, I cannot fathom how exhausted she is, but she is sort of living her best life right now. She always wanted to be a mom, mm -hmm. and, you know, as you know, waking up in the morning, for, I mean, in the middle of the night for her is just uh, part of the fun, mm -hmm. so to speak. So she deserves all the credit and more. I, I, I'd be lost without her. So I have I have four sons and I have one daughter. My daughter is now engaged uh, to be married. She'll be married in February to a wonderful, wonderful guy. We just love him to death. My oldest son, who's 32, uh, who lives right down the street here in Newport Beach, he just got married about three weekends ago. But boys are wonderful. They're, they're amazing. But there's just something about a daughter, too, for me. Like, my daughter, you know, I don't know. It's just a little different. So hopefully, uh, I don't know what you guys' plans are, too. But boys are phenomenal. But um, girls, they kind of tug at your heart a little different than <laughs> the know, boys it's do. It's funny because I always, I, I wanted a boy first. I want, I want a daughter as well, but I want... I wanted one of each, but I grew up with sisters, so I kind of saw how, I'm going to say, difficult they can be, you know, <laughs> growing up. I was in the middle, so I had to deal with a lot, and uh, I, I, you know, told myself, okay, if I had, in a perfect world, I'd have one of each, but I'd have that boy first, and he can kind of, you know, forge the path for her a little uh -huh. bit and protect her as she's, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, so... If all goes according to plan, that'll be the next one. <laughs> you never know. Well, uh, that's exciting for you, man. I'm excited. So let's back up. So tell me, because I'm always interested in, uh, <clears throat> you know, different people who choose different paths. And you talked a little bit about your mom kind of uh, being involved in real estate, your father. And you kind of had a little bit of a, an idea. But for you, man, to just dive in and go and, and do it. Talk about that process and uh, kind of the thought process. How'd you really get started? Where'd you begin? I mean, give me a little, give us a little background on that. Well, before I got into real estate at all, I was living in LA. I was trying to be an actor, mm -hmm. actually. So I was up there for a few years and, you know, busting my ass trying to go to this audition and this audition and uh, totally fruitless. It got nowhere. Didn't <laughs> never, I mean, never got a gig of any, you know, <laughs> substance, but it, it taught me something that I did, you know, bring with me when I moved back to, to OC, which was, you know, like I was saying earlier, fake it till you make it. I mm -hmm. mean, you walk into a room, whatever room that is, audition room, uh, listing appointment room, and you own that effing room. And I will never uh, forget that anytime I have something important, you know, you, you have to, to walk in with an air of confidence because regardless of what you're selling, at the end of the day, you're selling yourself mm -hmm. and that's all that's going to instill trust or, you know, any faith in the person sitting across from you. So I think that has been the most valuable piece of advice that I could give and that I continue to remind myself because mm -hmm. you don't own that room. You ain't own nothing. Mm -mm. And nobody's going to back you. They're not, they're not getting on your train with you. No. Unless, <laughs> unless you're confident in how you're driving the bus. They're not getting on. Exactly. So when I, when I was getting started in real estate and I knew essentially nothing, I'd you know, find myself just by sheer force of will into appointments or you know, listing appointments that I had no business being in whatsoever. But for whatever reason, I was there. And you know, I'd walk in and, you know, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. You know, I'd walk around the house and I would, I would just pretend like I had done it a thousand times before and I had sold it already. And it was just an attitude of, it's more, it's more than confidence. It's, I don't know the word, but it's, it's a, it's an energy mm -hmm. that you exude. And I mean, for whatever reason, it, it works sometime, not every time, but uh, enough. And it thankfully got to me, got, helped me get me to where I am today. So here, here's the thought, and in, uh, in, uh, I've, I've watched the show, so I've watched you, I've met you. So the first time I met you and shook your hand, okay, here, let me give you, give you a little kind of a, when I coached college basketball for a long time, and I was a head coach at a lot of big places, and uh, coaches that can recruit players, I, I used to say some of the best ones, they're attractors. Like they attract people to them. They just do. People that are really good at it, because at the end of the day, somebody wants to trust their child with you as a coach and say, hey, I'm gonna, I would love for my son or daughter to play for you. I trust you. But 
the the personality trait of man that guy's an attractor like he just attracts people to him so when i met you in in uh, behind the oppenheim building there that was my first thought i said this guy is an attractor like you attract people to you it's just part of your personality which i would think selling houses especially the the caliber of homes that you're selling and the level of homes you're selling to get that listing like for somebody to say I want you to be, I'm choosing you to sell my house. There has to be, it's like, it's almost like it's not arrogance. It's a healthy arrogance. It's a good arrogance. It's a good confidence, but you have to be an attractor a little bit. Would you agree? Because I think you have that. You have, that's part of when I, when I walk up and shake your hand, that's part of it. I can say, wow, okay. No wonder. No wonder this guy has done really well. Well, I'm good at fooling people. No, <laughs> I think, uh, no, you're absolutely right. It is a healthy arrogance. You, mm -hmm. you have to have that because, you know, regardless of how much experience you have, it, it, at the end of the day, it's the energy you exude. So speaking of Oppenheim, so first time I met Jason Oppenheim, I was in real estate for about two years at that point. So not very seasoned, still pretty green. And I saw my wife and I, we had just got married. We were living right across the street from the, where the office is now. Mm -hmm. And we're walking by one morning, uh, our normal routine to go get coffee. And I look up and they're putting up this big uh, red O on the building. I had no clue what it was at the time. And, and my wife grabbed me. She's like, do you know what that is? I said, what? It's a red O. <laughs> She's like, no, that, that is the Oppenheim O that they're, they're coming to Orange, they're coming to Newport. They're, they're putting an office right here in our backyard. She's like, you need to go get suited up and get your ass in that building today. And I'm like, it's a construction site. Uh, what do you want me to do? Like go help like, you know, a hammer shit. And she's like, just go, just go. So I get home, shower suited up and I, I walk over to the building. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I walk over and Jason Oppenheim happened to be in there wow. checking out the construction. He had kind of driven down from LA and was there for, for a few hours. And it was that, that energy. I just, I walked in, went over to him, shook his hand and immediately clicked. Mm. It was just sort of like, a, I don't know, a lining of the stars. And I think he, for whatever reason, he knew I didn't have the experience, but he saw that this guy will do what it takes. He'll walk into the room like he owns it. And that's half the job. Mm. How so about that? Gratefully, great. I was grateful that he sensed that and he saw that. And, uh, you know, the rest kind of snowballed from there. And there was no TV show that right. it was just it was an office. And fast forward, they finished the construction. And we find out months later, hey, they want to do a spinoff show here in Orange County. And uh, Jason, you know, suggested my name to the producers. And, uh, you know, that whole audition process was an experience in and of itself. But, you know, I, again, I took that energy. I went in and, you know, you crank it up a few notches. And it's not that you're bullshitting or faking it. No, it's just you're showing a side of yourself that you reserve for business. And you can't be, I mean, personally speaking, I can't be on all the time. Mm -hmm. I would be, I would drain out. I, I'm not an energizer bunny, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I reserve it for the right time in the right place and it's, it's served me well. Where do you think um, kind of that inner confidence that kind of go get them, I'm getting this done. I used to have the term when I coach, I used to tell my guys all the time, it's a GID, just get it done. Well, coach, 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 I said, hey, it's a GID, get it done. Just get it done. Bottom line. That's, you know, we got to figure out. But where do you think for you that kind of confidence to say, hey, I'm going to shake this guy's hand. I'm getting this job. I'm getting the job. I'm getting that. Where, where do you think that? Well, it's funny. Speaking of basketball, <laughs> I have no, no talent for sports, basketball included. But I did play in high school a little bit. And my coach was a SOB, but he taught me one of the most valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. He used to yell at us, N-E. N E no excuses. Like no matter what, he didn't give a rat. Mm -hmm. You get the job done. You, you make that catch, you get the play done. I mean, so any, I took that any, and I tried to, you know, apply it to, to my professional world mm -hmm. and you know that, and also my parents, I mean, my, my mom and dad, God bless. I, I hit the jackpot. Mm -hmm. I had the lottery. They taught me the value of hard work, 
tenacity and perseverance. You, again, you take that, that spirit of whatever it takes and you get the job done, you, you hit your goal, you hit your mark, and you prove everyone wrong. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm grateful to them. My dad, he came to this country, he had nothing, he didn't have a penny in his pocket, he didn't even speak English. Mm. And he, he worked his ass off, and you know, I saw that growing up. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't around much, and I, I'm not faulting him for it. Mm-hmm. He was you know, providing for, for, for us and his family, and I, I respected the hell out of that, and I tried to take what they, they gave to me and undeservedly and, and try to build on that and make them proud. You know, probably, <clears throat> which is amazing. That's a great. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. But when you're when you um, kind of work in the environment you work in, and, and if I can kind of talk a little bit more about sports, but what happens? I, I felt not just sports, even in life. Sometimes what separates people that have high levels of success, which you've done a great, great job here. I think at a just at an early part of your career. I think you're kind of just getting started. Might be honest, but you've already hit some plateaus that are pretty remarkable. But would you agree that along the way, there are some people along the way that, you know, there's an old saying, ah, you know, when the the tough, the the going gets tough, tough get going, and you know, blah, 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 blah. But some people, when it gets hard, what I've watched, they quit. They they just don't have enough to kind of break through. They, They, the obstacles come, whatever it is that's hard, it's not going my way, I might have been fired from this job. Um, this happened to me. There, bad things happen. They're going to happen for all of us, and some are worse than others. They're tragic and they're hard. But I have found, even in my own life, if I look back, some of the guys when I was young and said, man, that guy could have been unbelievable. But as soon as they hit a hard spot, they just couldn't fight through, and they just quit. Would you, do you see some of that in your world of real estate where there are people that think, hey, man, I can do what you do, but really – they just kind of don't have enough to get through it. What do you think? Every day, all day. It's <laughs> and it, listen, I'm not judging, but it's a shame because I, another thing my parents taught me growing up: life, life is tough. Mm-hmm. When life is easy, God bless you, but that's not going to last. Life is tough. Expect tough and be grateful for the good times because the default and the norm is is oftentimes hell on earth. So. I, I struggled with this though, I'll be honest. Growing up, I'm a perfectionist. So mm-hmm. when I hit those roadblocks, I wanted to quit. And I quit a few times. I mean, mm-hmm. I quit a lot of things in my life and regrettably so. But, you know, as far as how things look from the outside looking in, they always look easy, you mm-hmm. know? And, and I see that all the time. People come up to me all the time and, and I'm not faulting them. They, you know, they wanna do real estate and, and, you know, I wish them the best, but it is, it is a grind. Mm-hmm. Life is a grind. And the sooner you realize that and accept that and not only accept it, but love it, mm-hmm. the better off you're going to be. There's so no question. Learn to love the grind. Learn to love the, the sweat and the blood and the tears. And, uh, you know, it's all well, part of life, part of the I, fun. I don't know how many, I don't, well, I don't know anybody in my view that has really done a phenomenal job in life and have achieved high levels of success that hasn't had some massive roadblocks or massive defeats or ma- you know there there those things happen you know like you said a lot of people might look at you and say oh yeah hey, that's pretty easy i can do that i can go i can go get, sell that 35 million dollar beach house or whatever and they don't realize everything that goes into that prior to that even for the fact that you've got the job there what you've learned some of the mistakes along the way like um you know it's there's a lot that goes into it a lot of people don't realize that so for you um it just appears to me as I'm getting to know you that you kind of have that, uh, I'm, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to find a way to get it done. I'm not going to roll over. It might punch me in the gut, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get there. Another thing I learned from my folks is, you know, you get knocked down, you, you, you know, keep getting, you know, keep standing back up. And I think I learned and I took that a little bit from my acting days in LA, you know, rejection was, every day and uh i think that gave me the thick skin that you need in real Mm -hmm. estate and you know it's um and this is the thing speaking just personally for for, from my business is 
What I love about real estate is it is the most accessible industry, in my opinion. You don't have to have a college degree. You don't have to have really much of an education at all. If you work hard and apply yourself, you will make money and succeed. Having said that, it's also the hardest industry just because it is 100% on you. There is no structure, no support system, no matter what office you're in. It's you wake up in the morning, you go to bed at night, when your head hits that pillow, it's all 100% on you. And that's where that any, that no excuses comes into play for me because it, there's no one I can point to. There's no, there's no boss I can, I can complain to. It, sometimes it's my wife, but it's, you know, <laughs> she is my boss, but uh, I do reserve you know, some complaining for her. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is all you. And that's the scary part. But that scariness, I mean, life without risk is fucking boring. That's right. You know? And so I, I've been blessed. I've had a blessed life. I'm not going to hide it. I mean, I've worked hard, but I've also been handed a lot of advantages with my family in the, in the business. So, you know, we all have our own personal struggles, though, and battles mm -hmm. at the end of the day that mm -hmm. we, we have to overcome daily. And um, some challenge, some people have challenges bigger than others, but overcoming them is what separates sadly you know mm -hmm. the successful from unsuccessful oftentimes there's no question one other thing i wanted to mention when uh, so i'm watching the the episode of uh, selling the oc and uh, our friend cat I, I know she kind of helped and she might have been a part of it but you had the you had the ice sculpture <laughs> of your face or your head or you know, you know your your bust i guess you know up and you guys but the cool thing about it was you were celebrating the hundred million dollar milestone, okay, and and I can remember I'm, I'm gonna my uh, my uncle uh, Mike Gottfried coached football for years and he was the head football coach at Kansas and Pittsburgh and all over the country, and he had gotten fired and gotten out of coaching and one time I asked him I said Mike if you ever go back, what's one thing that you'll apply that you've learned, and he said I would learn to enjoy the victories more and I'd let the defeats go because what happens especially in coaching. The defeats kill us. Mm. And even when we win, we're just on to the next thing so fast. Mm -hmm. What I liked is when I was watching that episode is, you know, you were celebrating, which you should celebrate, the milestones like that. You should enjoy the wins because a lot of times people forget. They, they don't enjoy the wins enough. They, they, we allow the, the losses to devour us. Mm. But then when we get a win, we just don't really celebrate it. And I love the fact that you did that. I don't know if that was just part of the show, but... <laughs> You're celebrating a win, which you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it was a little over the top, but it, it's it's television at the end of the day, so you know, go big or go home. But no, you're absolutely right. You, if you don't take that time and and reflect on the on your successes and your triumphs, you also get burnt out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to enjoy the moment. You have to enjoy enjoy those because they're slight. Right. They don't happen often. Right. So. Um, I mean, that's hugely important for me. And I'm someone who I'm, I'm learning this now to really trying to dive in into battling my perfectionist mindset because, and I asked myself, so I read this in a book, but you ask yourself when things don't go your way, is it an inconvenience or is it a tragedy? Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, it's an inconvenience. It's not mm -hmm. a tragedy. So, right. you know, but nine times out of 10, I would treat it like a tragedy. And right. that is what brings me down personally. And it could be the stupidest, simplest thing. I didn't get this listing or, you know, this, my competition, this Asian who I just have this, you know, rivalry with got it over me. And, you know, uh, it's an inconvenience, learn from it, let it motivate you, but don't mm. let it bring you down. And right. so when I hit that hundred million <laughs> and we're filming, you know, selling the OC, I said, you know what, this is an opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to, you know, celebrate like it's my birthday mm -hmm. and no one else's. And, you know, the ice sculpture was purely Kat's <laughs> idea. That was, <laughs> it's not something that occurred to me or ever would, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, everyone poked fun at it as I was hoping they would. So it, um, it's, uh, I like to create in the office competition and, and friendly competition to help motivate everyone else. So, I think stupid things like ice sculptures of oneself can can do that sometimes. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I loved it. All right, so now you're, so he hires it, Jason. He hires you, and uh, okay, now you know here you are, the big O on the 
down on PCH here, right there in Corona Del Mar. Mm -hmm. And now you're in there and then boom, hey, we're going to do a show. We're going to do a spinoff. And we've recommended you, Gio. We think you ought to be good on this show. What's your first thought? Okay. My <laughs> first thought was no, actually, I'll be honest, because I, I've never seen, I've never watched reality TV. Right. That is, I'm the last, ask my friends and family, I was the last person they would ever pick to be on a reality TV show. I'm a, I'm a no drama guy. And I mean, I really am not. So the show opportunity came along and I said, okay, I'll do, I'll do an interview for it. I'll audition for it. So I did, you know, a couple Zoom interviews and auditions, and uh, yeah, I hit it off with the producers. They're all great people, uh, done and done productions. But uh, I, I didn't. I was skeptical. I thought, okay, is this really going to happen? And they kept extend. You know, they they said, okay, if this happens, we want you on the show. I said, okay, if it happens. So I didn't. I didn't take that very seriously. They kept pushboning the you know start date of production, like six months, six months, six months. So when the time finally came and they're like, okay, production day one, show up at the office, suit it up. We're going to have everyone there. I didn't believe it. So I had a bet with my wife. I forgot what it was. It was something stupid, like some chore around the house. I don't remember, but anyways, I lost the bet because the, the camera people were there when I showed up that day and it, it's been such a wild ride. I, I don't, I don't understand when I, when I think back how I ended up here, but I'm grateful. So at that time, and I'm just curious here, because I think some of the people on the show have seemed to change a little bit, but kind of the core of the cast, like we, we just finished watching season two, that kind of core group, were they all kind of there on day one, everybody? Or was it a lot of different people back then? Or? No, no, we started with it. The crew you see now is the crew that we started with. And, uh, you know, it's it's been... That's what's made this whole process interesting is the relationships mm -hmm. and how when those cameras turn on, everything changes. Mm -hmm. So you thought you knew someone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Once those stakes are raised, you see different sides of their personality. And um, it's it's been good and bad. You know, I've, I've gotten closer to some and, and fallen out with others. And mm -hmm. I think that's the sad part of, uh, of reality TV. It, it does bring out sometimes the best and worst in each of right. us. So, right. uh, but that, that core group, it's been, you know, we finished filming, uh, three seasons now. So mm -hmm. the third season will be out soon. And, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's hard when you're in it, but for a viewer, if you watch season one, episode one, and then the last episode of season three, that's not out yet. You're going to see, you're going to see changes mm -hmm. in, in people. Mm -hmm. And, some for the good and some for right. the not so right. good. Right. All right. Full disclosure. So I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina <clears throat> with my fiance. Her name is Gina, her daughter, Anne Marie. And, and uh, we're going to watch this show called Selling the OC. Okay. So uh, my first reaction is I'm not watching that show. What do I want to watch that show for? Okay. No judgment. And uh, <laughs> so we start watching. And, for, you know, you first see, oh, man, there's some cool houses, and you get these big, massive, beautiful homes that are right on the coast, and, you know, they're listing for $28 million and $32 million and all these things. And so it kind of draws you a little bit. And then the show begins, and kind of at first, I, 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 you may hear this a lot or you may not. I'm just being honest. It's kind of like, I don't really want to watch it. Then I get going. It's like I'm kind of hooked now. I'm kind of <laughs> I'm, Now I'm watching it. And now I'm getting to know you a little bit and Alex and Polly and everybody. I'm, I'm kind of trying to, to figure out who they are. And, you know, everybody's kind of mixing in and out. And so next thing you know, man, I'm like watching the show. I can't oh, it's wait hypnotic. To watch it. Those producers nailed down the formula. They, they know how to hook and sync. I mean, it's, um, it, it's a, frankly, it's a guilty pleasure for a lot of people. Right. And I've, being a part of that world, I've started to naturally watch more reality TV. And it is a Addicting. It I is. Mean, I can see the appeal, you know, and I'm not just talking about real estate reality TV. I'm just saying the genre in general is just mind blowing. I'm, I don't think I watch much narrative television anymore. I think 80% of it is reality TV. I mean, so, and it's taken over the industry. Yeah. I mean, you're talking yeah. from sports to, to real estate, to cooking. I mean, I think it has its hands in every pot. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously an appeal there. There's mm -hmm. an audience there. And I, I'm, I'm curious to see 
how it continues to progress yeah. as, as a business model. Um, yeah, time will tell. You may be too young. I was living in Los Angeles. I was coaching at UCLA, coaching basketball, and O.J. Simpson trial, in my view, was kind of like the first reality mm -hmm. TV before there was reality TV. We were watching you know, the trial. You're watching everything live, and it's real. And it's kind of like reality. You know, obviously, it was a different you know, circumstances and all that that was very tragic. But we're watching this play out right in front of our eyes. You know, how are the judge, how's the jury going to respond? You know, what's the defense going to present tomorrow? And then what's this? And, you know, you're watching it every day. And America was glued, glued to the television. I'm talking about all day long now, every day. It was crazy. And it was kind of maybe, I don't know, I'm not a... It's kind of like the birth of maybe reality. It was kind of like reality TV before it's funny. this stuff. I was a little young, but I remember, I remember coming home from school or whatever, and my mom would be on the couch, all of her girlfriends <laughs> over, and they they'd be just sucked into this. And then I, later on, at the end of the night, they're on the phone talking about it. It's like, I think you might be onto something. <laughs> that, I think that might have been the the like conception the of it. <laughs> the yeah. Beginning. Oh, man. So here's here's another uh, honest truth. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bear it all out there. So I watched season one. I haven't met you. I don't know I don't know anybody. I'm just now we moved to Newport. Now we're 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 transplanted here. We're living here in Newport Beach. It's amazing, lovely. I, I've been familiar with Newport a little bit more, obviously, than my fiance. But we're we're here, and then you know we had a chance to to meet you guys at a, at an event there uh, at the Hoppenheim uh, building. But full full disclosure, first season. I'm like, I don't know if I like that guy. I don't know if I like Gio. I don't know if I like him a lot. He's kind of, I don't know, you know, he's in, he's in everybody's skin. He's underneath this person, you know, all that. Then I got, I got to meet you, and it's like, okay, wait a minute. That guy's a whole different kind of guy. Like we <laughs> talked about earlier, you had this kind of personality, very warm, friendly, just kind of genuine. And it's like, okay. And then as I watched the, the, the rest of it, the next season, it seems like you kind of have a little bit different role, but I don't know how much in the show. And then again, are you kind of pushed to act a certain way or obviously for reality TV, they, they need some drama. They want mm -hmm. drama between the, the cast and, you know, I'm mad at you and you're mad at me and this girl did this and then she did that. And oh, I saw you two kissing over there behind the bush and, you know, it's just constant. But how much of that is, is kind of encouraged by everybody? And by the way, I'm sorry. I didn't no, to, no, no, no. I didn't mean to offend you. And I told you I really all. didn't like you after I'm the first season. I'm laughing at myself because <laughs> I, this just occurred to me. I spent, I, like, like a lot of people, I spent my entire life trying and wanting to be liked <laughs> and then when this show came along i think i was just just mature enough you know i just got married i was i just i felt just um confident in my own skin enough for the first time in my life where i said you know what if it, i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it on thick i'm gonna have an opinion about things that i normally wouldn't and it's not that i wasn't being genuine i just voiced things that i would normally keep my mouth shut about uh -huh. And I, I realized that after season one came out, I, I don't think I'm very likable, but <laughs> I kind of liked for once in my life. It was a little refreshing that I, I, I went after the opposite. I <laughs> maybe unintentionally, but uh, you know, as a you know, growing up, everyone wants to be liked. I want to be liked as an adult. And then here, fast forward, there's a platform that's going to put me in front of more people than my entire life combined. And, I'm not liked. <laughs> and I was okay with it. I'll be honest. I was okay with it. So I would guess, I'm just guessing, the producers probably liked it, though. Yeah, yes. Yeah, now, they liked it. They answer. liked it. They liked that, that Geo they had back there that was kind of super brash and <laughs> super cocky. And look, I'm the baddest guy on the planet, and I'm going to sell this, and you can't sell it, but I can. You, you kind of had that, you know, going a little bit, which I'm sure they probably said, yeah, because it was a draw into the show. You know, if I'm watching it, like, they, what's, what's Gio going to do next? Like, what's he going to say next kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, they, they liked it. They loved it. And after season one came out, they pulled me aside right before we started season two. And then same after season three. And they said, Gio, listen, love what you're doing. Lean in. I said, lean in. How more, much, how much further more. can I lean in? They said, lean in. We love it. We, you know, you, you, we understand you're playing a persona of yourself. It's maybe not you know, 100% your day-to-day -day authentic geo, you know, but this is not, 
every day. You're not on, you know, cameras aren't following you around every day. So lean in, enjoy it, have fun, have an opinion. So yeah, they push me, they push everyone. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, that is their job and sometimes too far, I mm -hmm. think. And it's, it, they, they play a fine game because mm -hmm. They keep us all in the dark. You know, we're, mm -hmm. let's say we're eight cast. They don't tell us what's going on with the other one. They want to manipulate us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a little bit of the shady side of the business because mm -hmm. they, they oftentimes it's not always for the, for the mm -hmm. best. Their, mm -hmm. their inten intentions can be a little shady, but, um, you know, I, I think we're all big boys and girls. We know mm -hmm. that going mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. and that's their job. I'm right. not faulting them for it. Uh, but it's, you got to learn to discern what's okay and what's not, because you don't want to be their puppet hundred mm -hmm, percent. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm learning that as I go. Mm -hmm. And they're doing, I mean, they're doing this to make money. They're not, this isn't for charity. I mean, they're, this is a business and mm -hmm. making movies and making TV shows. And so what sells sells and you know, they push you guys. So you're what, so now you go home, you're watching season one and you're with Tiffany, your, your bride and, and uh, she's watching the show. What is she? What's her? What's her take on Geo watching episode season one, like episode one, two, three, four? What she said? I think she says something in the fact like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even. Yeah, I think she was a little speechless. But um, you know, I think once the dust settled, she she was proud of me. I mean, she knew. <laughs> You know, she knew what's. She was the reality TV fan. She she's the one who knew what that big red O was before there were any other letters up there. So, right. she understands that you have to play the game a little bit. Like, right. It's the same thing as is my business. You, you know, you fake it till you make it. So right. I was faking it a little bit. Right. Just to have fun, enjoy it. I mean, it's not every day you get to be on TV. Right. So I I I kept that in mind, and I full and wholeheartedly had fun. Right. So that's where that came from. But so all, <laughs> all of my uh, friends who are going to watch this and listen to this, they're, they're going to give me all kind of crap on this next one. The fact that I know that Alex and Brandy had a moment where their friendship was kind of on the rocks and a Alex <laughs> cried a little bit. Like all my buddies are going to be like, what, Mark? As, like, as are they you should. kidding me? Like, <laughs> as they should, like, Bob. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> what has happened to you? But like even those scenes, it's interesting that you say that you, they kind of keep you guys in the dark a little bit. And a lot of that is, I mean, I'm sure some of it's manufactured, but a lot of it ends up kind of, it has to be, there has to be some genuineness to it to, to capture some of the true, you know, some of the emotion of what you guys go through as you interact with one another. A hundred percent. But at the end of the day, you are at the mercy of the editor. So, you know, we film, this is the incredible part, we film probably four seasons that they condense into one. Mm. So we don't have a clue on what's actually making it to the final edit or not. So we, we might have an idea, okay, this is where my character is going. This is where my relationship with, let's say, Alex Hall is going. Mm. And then we don't get to see it maybe until a couple weeks before it's released. Mm. And we're like, whoa, I don't, I don't understand. Like, we're blindsided sometimes. Mm. So, you know, yeah, we're genuine, but they can... They yeah. can manipulate a lot. They do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do a good job. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is how good, how well uh, they've done with this show. And, uh, and I don't know the numbers. Give, give me an idea. Like on a, on a typical episode, uh, you may know or may not know, but what, what's the viewership? How many, million, how many people are watching, you think, per episode? You know, and that's the thing. Netflix is notoriously discreet. Are they, they? They keep those numbers. Oh, it has to be millions. We're talking about millions and millions. I mean, you hope so. When you see, you know, we were, I think... Season one, we were in the top 10 for about four weeks on Netflix, top 10 TV shows watched. And season two was a little less than that. Uh, we didn't quite hit the mark where I wanted to hit. I mean, I, I'm not speaking for Netflix, but mm -hmm. um, so I, I would imagine when you see where it is top 10, I think we were in 30 countries mm -hmm. for like two weeks. So mm -hmm. I, I'd imagine in the millions, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think it's in the millions just right. for my ego's sake, but right. I, I don't have a clue. You know, they've done a really good job in my view. <clears throat> and, you know, I was involved in some television too. I worked at ESPN for a number of years. And so I've been involved with a little bit, but they've done a great job of with the characters, you know, the people, but then also the imagery and you see these homes and the cliffs and the the drone shots along the water and I mean they they've done it to where I mean Newport Beach, Corona Del Mar, Laguna Beach, 
they're some of the nicest places to live anywhere in the world. I don't care what anybody says. You can try your hardest all your whole life, and this is going to be one of the nicest, most beautiful places. But they have done a good job with that, of drawing you in and the homes and the different things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the drama that you guys kind of have, you know, it makes for television, you know, for some fun TV that you can – you know, get going with it. And they've also done a good job with this. Just like when I was telling you earlier, like in season one, I was like, well, I don't know if I like that guy, you know, Gio. but kind of in season two, now that's become like Kayla. Brand. Mm. Like for me, if I'm on my couch, mm -hmm. I'm going, I don't know if I like that girl. Mm -hmm. I've never met her. I've never shook her hand. I don't know her, but mm -hmm. they've done a good job with, with that, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's pushed, but uh, kind of all together, they, they've got a good thing going, I believe. Yeah. And I will say what sets Selling Sunset, Selling the OC apart from a lot of reality TV, like all the Bravo shows and, you know, the other real estate shows is they have mastered making everything look beautiful. You know, uh, Adam DeVello, Done and Done Productions, I mean, they know, <laughs> they have a secret formula to make it look just pristine. You know, you watch, you watch a lot, a lot of other reality shows. I mean, you see, you know, trash and everything. They, they, they oh, clear they make yeah. everything look spotless pristine and and i think yeah. that's what draws a lot of viewers in mm -hmm. because yeah it's reality tv but it's almost like a it's a fictionalized world that you're watching mm -hmm. so yeah we live in a beautiful area i mean this obviously I'm, I'm biased in that respect i sell homes here but i think they've they've taken that beauty and really put it on steroids yeah they have and that goes for everything they shoot yeah what what long term? So now you you've got a couple two or three seasons, and I'm sure there'll be more as long as the show keeps doing well. Uh, for you, you look out there and you're young and you've done well and you've got some great success under your belt. You you've really done a good job. Now, you look out there and, and say, I want to. What, what's hmm. what does Geo want to conquer um, outside of just cranking? Or is there a number in real estate? Like, hey man, this is I got my eyes on that number. What what is it? Oh, man, that's the million dollar question. Uh, I'm enjoying the ride right now. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have goals in mind, but I, I'm grateful to to be on this show. I know that there's a line out the door for people mm -hmm. who want to, you know, be in my place. So I'm I'm trying to enjoy the moment the best I can. I just had a baby and I'm, I'm you know, people keep telling me the days are long, but the years are short. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to really soak up every day. And that includes the filming, the real estate, uh, you know, I, I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself because mm -hmm. that's how I live most of my life mm -hmm. is being discontent with where I'm at. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's also okay to be content mm -hmm. once in a while. And mm -hmm. it's seasons of life. So trying to enjoy this season mm -hmm. and, you know, it's um, hopefully a lot more good things to come though. And in a, because because one thing I've I've enjoyed is I've gotten to know you a little bit because you do have a I, I love your confidence I, I like it I like it on the show I, I like it you know because but when you walk in that office at the Oppenheim and you guys sit in your little desks there and you got the bell over there you know you guys ring the bell <laughs> my buddies by the way they're gonna laugh at me too that I even know all that I hope so <laughs> but, <laughs> trust me you know what my friends the shit they give me for being on a show like this. My friends, they do not let me, even to this day, they don't let me live it down. Trust me. I, <laughs> I'm going to catch so much grief after this, this one right here airs. It's going to be unbelievable. But when you walk in that door and you've got Alex and Polly and Kayla and Brandy and you got them all in there, you know you're the baddest guy in the group. You know that, don't you? You're the, you're the baddest one in there, don't you? Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a great crew. I'm not going to yeah, admit to anything. Yeah, I'm not going to admit to that. But I... I like I said earlier, I'm the last guy I ever thought would be on a show like you, mm -hmm. and my friends will never let me forget it ever. They <laughs> grill. I mean, it's part of the fun. And but you know, great players—they're humble, but they also know they're the baddest guy mm. in the gym too. When I walk in the gym as a player, I know I'm the best one. I know, <laughs> and you're not taking my lunch from me. I'm, you're not doing it. So that's I, I like if, that about you. If I you. think that, I'm not going to say it though. Let's I know. I know you wouldn't say it, but I like that about you. All right, so here now you've got a child, and uh, it's a, it, it will be, you know, as a father of five, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, there, there won't be any, in my view, there won't be any house you'll ever sell, there won't be any milestone you'll ever make, 
there won't be any win that you have that will give you as much joy as your child. Mm. So I'm happy for you in that regard. And one thing I, I've kind of done with a lot of the, the, the people I've had on the show is I always ask this question, <clears throat> and you may have not ever thought about this before, but if you can just take a second and kind of digest the question, but if you could, if you could gift, if you could gift Teddy, or you, or you could just breathe characteristics into Teddy, he said, man, I want you to, to have this characteristic or these two or three characteristics, man, I, I hope you... You know, what do you think those would be? Courage, mm. number one. Explain. You look at our world right now, Mark. I mean, it's it's full of weakness, mm. and I, I I don't know how specific I want to get here, but you know, I think our world has. It's going to be difficult raising a boy. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. I think our world is at a, a crossroads in a lot of respects, and you know, I, I think there's a lot of confusion out there with with what is what is it to be a man, mm -hmm. you know. So I think, I think, when I th when I think about my my young son, my three week year old, my three week old son, I'm I'm worried about him. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about the world that he's he's going to be growing up in. So if I can instill the first, the first characteristic that comes to mind is courage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's my job as a father to help teach him what that is to a large degree. So I, I, uh, I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> so, yeah. What are there any others? That's that's wonderful, by the way, and I think you're you're dead on. You you are so on target, and I think you and Tiffany together, you're gonna you're gonna find that way with courage. Would there be any others? Anything else? If you said, man, I could just gift. If I could just gift this to him, this 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 characteristic, you know, this part or this when you he know, when he gets older, you know, I, I want him to be. This is gonna sound really boring and maybe very like like a low bar, but decency, mm. like I think it's so underrated mm. being a decent human being. I think, you know, it, it, the world today, I think if you could divide it into two separate people, it's be the decent and is it indecent? Undecent? Right. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Those that sleep aren't. Deprived. Those yeah. that aren't. How Those about that, that aren't. Yeah. yeah. Um, no sleep with the three <laughs> newborn, <laughs> but, uh, I think, yeah. I think decency is is something that kind of is an umbrella over a lot of one's behavior. Wow, wonderful! He'll have them. Teddy Hope will so. have those. No, he will. There's no question. Oh, you guys will do a great job. Well, man, I just want to say thank you for coming in. I, I'm enjoying getting to know you. I'm proud of you. I don't know yeah, you that well, great. but I'm really proud of what you've been able to accomplish. And I think uh, you know you got uh, the both of you have some amazing fun times coming. So. Uh, Congrats, man, and best Thanks. of luck. And when you and Gina need to buy a house, you know what to call. <laughs> <Come find laughs> you. All right, thank you for coming. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you.